Which you guys got another video on all you need to know about Windows 11 backup. This also is covered for Windows 10, but we're going to be on Windows 11 here, but you can do all of this or most of this on Windows 10 as well. So we're going to be talking about the backup options that are built into Windows here. We're going to be talking about the backup and restore for Windows 7 and also file history and the new Windows backup app that we have here. So I'm going to go through all of this for you and show you how to set it up and how to back up stuff on a regular basis because it's important to back up your data. So the first thing we're going to look at is backup and restore. And it's obviously, as you can see, Windows 7. It's been around that long. So you've got options here to create a system image and create a system repair disk. We'll go through this in more detail a little bit later on. But what we're going to do is first back up data for this machine. I'm pretty sure all of you know about Windows Backup already. I wanted to cover this for the people that have just joined my channel, that are new to the channel, and also might not know about backing up Windows or backing up their data. So let's click on the Setup Backup here and choose a destination where we want to back it up. So I've got a drive plugged into my computer here. You can see we recommend that you save your backup on an external drive. This is an external drive that I've got plugged in. And you can see down here, it says a system image cannot be saved on this location, more information. And you can read all that information right there. But I'll show you how to cover that a little bit later on in the video. So we're talking about just data right now. So we're going to click on the actual drive that we want to back up to. We also have save to a network. So if you want to save this information uh, to a network drive, you can do if you have a NAS or you have some sort of other device that attaches itself to the network where you can drop files or backup data to, then this is the place where you can put that location in. Network location, backslash, backslash, example, shows you right there below. You would just put in whatever your network attached storage is. And in case it's something like, say, Office NAS or Home Backups or whatever you've called your NAS, it will be here. It will either be an IP address or it will either be a, a particular name that you've created. Mine would be, say, Office NAS or something like that. And again, you would be able to uh, allocate this to your NAS. You can create a folder on your NAS for all your backups and it will go to that location and drop all the content into there. Sometimes there's an IP address depending on how you set yours up. You can also browse for your network attached storage here and it will populate and come up here. I'm on a virtual machine, so it's not going to populate here because there's no network attached storages on my network here for this particular device. You can also give it the network credentials. This will be to log into the actual NAS so you can uh, back up all your data there. You would need to put in your username and password and that would be the network setup. We're just going to back up to the actual drive here. So let Windows choose recommended Windows will back up data files saved in libraries on your desktop. Uh, and in default Windows folders, the items be, will be backed up on a regular schedule. So that's the first option, or you've got let me choose. You can select libraries and folders and whether to include a system image in the backup, the items you select will be backed up on a regular schedule as well. So choose which one suits you. I'm going to go for let me choose here because this will give me the option to uh, choose what I want to back up to my drive. Now, it wants to back up all of the data on that computer. And uh, you can do that if you wish. And you can also back up your Windows image if you want to all in this uh, sequence. But I'm not going to do that. I just want to back up one location, which is my pictures library. You can choose whatever you want to back up on your computer. And whether you want to make a system backup as well will determine whether you want to select those options. So I'm just going to select this just for quickness. And uh, you can choose whatever you like. You can see here there is an include the system image of drives, EFI system partition. This is grayed out for me for this particular drive. I am on a virtual machine, but that option may be available for you. You can now see we do have a red circle with a line through it. That means this stuff is not going to be backed up. And the only stuff that's going to be backed up here is the actual pictures library. Next, we're going to change a schedule. We don't want Windows to decide when we want to back up. They're saying weekly, but we might want to do this daily. So we're going to put this on a daily basis. And you can see here what time. There is a what day here, but that's grayed out. But what time would be uh, suitable for you. So I wouldn't do this at a time when you're really busy on the computer because it will be taking up system resources. So you want to do it when you're less 
less busy on the computer when the computer's idle and it will do this in the background. Click save settings and run backup and this will start the backup process and will start backing up to that location you chose. And again, the files and folders and data that you chose to back up will be over there. It will take a bit of time depending on how much data you have to back up, but because I only chose one little folder, there's not gonna be much data here. This is the actual backup that's been created. You can see it's that little disc with another uh, DVD disc on there and a green arrow. And again, you can double click on this to open this up or you can right click on it as well. So let me just show you, you've got the restore options here when you right click or double click. So you can see, you should see something like this, restore my files from this backup or restore files for all users of this computer. And you can manage space used by this backup. So you can manage it and you can also restore it from this location. You can also open it if you want to and have a look inside. What you need to do here is right click on it and there should be a word saying open. Just click on it and you will be able to open what's inside here and see. Let's just show you how to do that quickly. I'm going to right click, go open, and this will open up the backup that we just made. Now, yours may be quite a large backup, and you should see backup set, and there'll be a date, time, and everything else on there. That is where all your data is. So you can go inside here, and you should see backup folders. There's only a couple here. So I'm going to open this up and go through to the location, and there's all the stuff I just backed up, and it was that quick and easy. If you've got lots of data, it will take a lot more time than that. Uh, you can see here, there's just some wallpapers here and you can extract these if you want to and you can extract these to the desktop or wherever you want to if you want to open them or you can restore them using the backup restore. So let me just extract all of these as well and extract these to a location of my choice. I'm going to extract these to maybe the desktop or something like that. Let me go ahead and do that. Go desktop, create a quick folder on here and we'll give this a name. We'll just call this images. And we can select this and extract these two there. So let's go select folder, extract, and there we go. And there's the actual uh, data that's just been uh, extracted and put onto the desktop. Okay, so that's the backup section done. Let's talk about some other things that you can do in Windows that people might be interested in doing. You should be backing up your data on a regular basis. It's really important because if you get hit with ransomware or anything like that, you're gonna lose all your data. That's a pretty basic program, but it does what you need to do. It's got your backup now, it's got your restore my files, it's got restore all users files and select another backup to restore files from. So you can do different types of backups and it's all created in this little panel here. And it's been around for a very long time, as you can see since Windows 7. And you can change the settings here if you want to, and you can also manage the space that you want to uh, uh, back up too. So depending on what you want to do, it would all be done in this location. Now we've got create a system image. This is going to create a system image of your system. So depending on what uh, size your drive is and how much data you have on it will determine how long this takes. You can back up this to a network location and you can also back up to a DVD as long as the DVD is big enough for your backups. And you can then select Next, we're going to go to an external drive here. You can see it's going to back up the EFI system partition, the C system, and also Windows recovery system. Start backing up. And this is a backup of our Windows system. And uh, that's what it's going to do here. I'm going to go ahead and prepare and create a backup. It will take a bit of time, depending on how large your drive is and how much it's backing up will determine how long this takes. So I'm just going to click OK here and let this continue. And then once this is done, I'll speed this process up and you'll get to the end and it will ask you to create a system repair disk. And once you end it, it should say create a system repair disk. So the backup has now been completed and it's asking you to create a system repair disk can be used to boot your computer. It also contains Windows system recovery tools, which can help you recover your windows from a serious error or re-image your computer from a system image. So it's advisable if your system's non-bootable and you want to reinstall your Windows from the backup image that you've just created, which is that system image we created just now, then it's advisable to create a system repair disk. But we're going to leave it for this video because it is straightforward and it just goes through the motions of creating a system repair image. But you should create one because if your system don't boot, you can boot to that system recovery image and then use your image backup to re-image your system back to a working state. So that's the whole purpose of it. So as you can see inside here, it does give you that backup. 
folder of the Windows system image and these are the Windows system image files and it will give you the date that it was created. Okay, so let's now take a look at file history and file history is going to be backing up data from your computer to a location of your choice. And again, some people don't class this as a backup, but uh, it's a form of backup and we're going to go ahead and take a look at it here. So click on control panel and once you're inside here, you will see file history. So we're going to go inside file history and you'll see at the top here, it says you're already backing up your files to stop using your current backup drive. Go to backup and restore and turn that off. So when I turn on file history it means we'll now be backing up two lots of files, but we really want to cancel the other one if we are using file history. So let's go ahead and just turn the uh, schedule off. I'm going to do that right here. Turn off. There we go. And now we can go back to file history. And I'll show you how file history works. So file history is pretty basic and uh, pretty uh, easy to use. You can see it's already turned on and we got the run now, but there is some settings that you can mess around with inside the advanced settings tab here. We also have uh, restore your personal files, select a drive and exclude folders. So let's go ahead and select a drive first and we can then change what we need to do here. So you can see it's selected already our backup drive, which is our E drive. And you can also see that it's given us the option to add a network location. This will obviously be some sort of network attached storage where you can back up your data to. And you can see I've not got it set up on here, but if I did, I could back up data to my NAS. And uh, I've already covered that in some videos, so you can check some of those videos out. I'm not going to go through backing up to a, a network attached storage. If you want to see an updated video, let me know in the comments section below. And uh, but yeah, we've got this back up here to a, an external drive. So I'm going to go ahead and it says, do you want to use this drive uh, with file history? So I'm going to say yes. And we're going to go ahead now and we're going to go into uh, the advanced settings. Now there is uh, exclude folders, but I'm not going to go into that. That's just excluding folders that you don't want to uh, back up with file history. If you have a huge folder, maybe that's something that you don't want to back up. Now it wants to say every hour. But I'm going to do this daily and we're going to keep saved versions and we don't want to keep those forever default because obviously that's going to take up a huge amount of space. And you can see here until space is needed. And what this setting does is it will keep all the older versions of your files until the drive becomes full and then it will uh, remove the oldest revisions first and then it will keep the very latest ones. So that's that setting there and that's the one I prefer to use. So once we've got this done here, you can exclude folders, like I've said, and this could be a certain folder that you have. This is not backing up your Windows system files or your programs. This is just backing up your user profile, your data. So just bear that in mind. And once we run this, it's already creating a backup of that data and it will continue to do that on a daily basis. And it will be in this file history here, as you can see here. So this is all the location that it's backing up. And this is in my download section. So if you've got loads of stuff in your downloads folder, remember it's going to back all that up. And if you've got like some people keep gigabytes in there, tons and tons of it to restore stuff, you can click the restore button here and it will restore this and overwrite what's in there. So if it's emptied out, you can restore it and it will restore what it backed up in the previous time here. And you can see it's put all these files back. And again, if you want to access these in another way, you can do, but this is how you can access them and how you can restore them. And if you try and close it down while it's in the restore process, it will say the restore operation is in progress and you won't be able to close it down until it's uh, finished transferring those files back. Now, remember, to determine how much data it is will determine how long this takes. We can go to the downloads folder now and right click on it and go to properties and then go into previous versions. And you can see here, there is only one here because we've just done one backup. But over the course of time, you will see a big long list of files inside here. This is where you will be able to open and you can also restore your files from this location by just right clicking on the main folders like downloads, documents, pictures and stuff like that and go to properties. Then click the previous uh, versions tab and then you'll be able to restore all of your data from that location if you wanted to. Now we do have another backup coming to Windows 11 and this one's called Windows Backup. 
This one will back up your folders, your apps, your settings and your credentials. And guess what? You will need to be signed into a Microsoft account to use this particular Windows backup. This is a cloud backup. It will automatically keep it up to date and it will back it up to the cloud. So this is going to back up all of your personal stuff. So if you don't like using cloud backup at all, uh, then don't use this particular program. But basically, I'm not going to be using this one, but there is a backup option here, which you can click on backup. You will need to sign in and it's going to automatically start backing up all of what we just backed up there with file history and it's going to go straight into the cloud. Now, there is a good side to this. It means that it's going to keep this updated and it will be in the cloud. But there's also a downside. It means that all your personal information will be in the cloud on Microsoft servers. And uh, I really wouldn't use that option available. There's plenty of other options available out there. But that is all you need to know about Windows backups. Uh, on Windows 11. Now, of course, there is other options available. These are what's available built into Windows. And uh, again, it just depends on how you want to back up your system. If you want to use third party software like IOMI Backupper or uh, Acronis or anything like that, Mac Room Reflect, there's plenty of them to choose from. You can use those to back up your system. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it. I just wanted to go through this process and show you some of the options to back up your system. It is important and you should be backing up your data on a regular basis using the free to one backup rule. And this is basically free copies of your data backed up. And you can choose whatever way you want to back these up. And in, they should be in three different locations. One of these should be off site just in case. And you should have two types of backups in two different locations, like one in the cloud or one in a uh, external drive and also one on the computer depending on how you want to do it there's many different variables on the way you back that up but you should have free copies of your data in three different locations let me know in the comments section below what backup methods you use i'll be interested to see how you back up your data anyway with that said i think that's going to be about it my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk just want to say a quick shout out to all my youtube members i really appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the very next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Have a lovely weekend. Bye for now.